Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be cooking up a steak using a technique I have never done before. I'm going to be cooking a ribeye steak inside of a glass jar. I was inspired by a video I saw here on YouTube. I'll put a link down below. It's from a channel called Kadir Barsin and they cook a steak in a glass jar. It looks absolutely scrumdiddlyumptious. He also prepares a pasta dish made with lots of sugar as a dessert pasta, which sounds in itself very, very interesting. But I am going to be cooking a steak in a glass jar. At first I was a bit confounded because I thought glass jar tempering, won't the glass break? But of course it won't break. So glass jars like canning jars or ball jars are made specifically so that they can be boiled because that's how you preserve the jam or jelly or whatever you are preparing to be canned. So of course they could withstand the temperatures of cooking a steak inside of it. This hot water process creates a vacuum and allows you to preserve your summer harvest. You can have tomatoes in winter, peaches in winter. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. This process can also be used to preserve meats and I believe that's where this technique comes from. The USDA recommends that meat specifically be processed with under high pressure. That ensures that any kinds of pathogens will be killed. So I'm not planning on preserving the meat, meaning I'm not planning on putting this in my basement or my root cellar for several months to come. I just want to cook a meat in a glass jar. So let's go ahead and get started. So I hope at this point you all know that I adore learning. I love absorbing information, including a very simple technique for cooking meat inside of a jar. The first thing we need to do is have a beautiful cut of meat. Look at this ribeye steak. Isn't this gorgeous? It's about one inch thick and look at that beautiful marbling. Marbling is this netting of fat in the meat. You want to have a lot of that in there because that is tasty juiciness. This is weighs about one pound and I'm going to generously salt it with kosher salt. Now this may seem like a lot of salt, but not to worry because this is a lot of meat. Kosher salt also has really big flakes, but tends to be less kind of concentrated than table salt. So if you're using table salt, maybe pull back a little bit on the amount of salt. And then I'm going to use some freshly cracked pepper all over that. So believe it or not, this is enough steak for my entire family. We love just getting one big steak and then splitting it among ourselves, slice it up into bits, spread it out on our plate. And we often have it with rice because it's so stinking delicious. This is a one quart canning jar, all nice and clean. I'm gonna open up my pepper grinder and grab a few peppercorns, put a pinch of those in there. I love that sound probably about 10 peppercorns. Okay, now we're going to take our beautifully seasoned steak and just slide it into the jar. Beautiful. It fits very nicely. Wash my hands. Next, we're going to add one bay leaf. Boop. I'm not sure why they include a shaker screen top to a jar of bay leaves, but okay. <laughs> now we're going to add some more pepper and add a couple cloves of fresh garlic. Whoa, flying onion. And press in half a small onion and some dried thyme sprinkled in there and some paprika. I think this is a really sweet addition. We're gonna add some tomatoes. These came right out of my garden. Go to the bottom, friend. It doesn't want to. And then we're gonna drizzle it with a little bit of oil right on top. Now we're gonna take our canning lid, place it on top, close it up, and that's it. We're not adding any water to this whatsoever. Any broth that is produced is gonna come right out of the steak. Okay, so now it's time to cook. We need a saucepan or a pot that is deep enough that will go about two thirds or three quarters up the side of our jar. So before we place our jar into the saucepan, I'm gonna take a napkin and lay it in the bottom. And that will prevent some of the rattling. Place the jar into the pot. So now we're gonna take our boiling water and we're going to bring this to a boil. And once it comes up to a boil, 
We're going to reduce it to just a blurby kind of simmer and then proceed to cook this for three hours during which we should replenish the level of water because of course the water will evaporate and we always want to maintain it nice and high and because I'm using boiling water it's already come up to a boil which is great. I'm going to reduce this down. Also remember this comes out of a food preservation technique so in reality this would be done with many jars. I hope I'm getting the channel name correctly. Country Life Videos, Country Life Vlog, amazing videos. I'll put a link down below to their channel with the correct channel name. Beautiful videos on showing old techniques including how to can meat as well and they do a large large batch which makes sense because again this is food preservation. This should probably be deeper so I'm going to get a deeper pot. Alrighty my lovelies, I am back. It has been three and a half hours since I put my steak into the vat of hot water. Now let's see how it is and most importantly how it tastes. So excited about this. Now I changed the pots that I cooked my steak in. The other one was not quite deep enough. Here is the steak all cooked inside there. Okay, here we go. Oh, I need a spoon to unseal this. <sighs> Great sound. There is our beef. Oh, it smells great. It smells like stew. Ooh, look at the sauce. It's kind of orange in color from the paprika. Here is the beef. Oh my gosh, my ribeye steak cooked in a jar. <gasps> Oh, it smells incredible. This was so easy and so simple. It's like the original slow cooker <laughs> or something. Look at that, that looks beautiful. And I can already tell it is so tender when I was pulling it out of the jar, it was just falling apart. But look, just, I don't even need a knife. It just pulls apart with my fork, so tender. Um, itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. Delicious. I can taste the thyme and the paprika. Now I'm going to taste a little bit with this really tender garlic. Mmm. The garlic is completely cooked and super soft, sweet, and just lightly perfumed with garlic. Really mellows out when you cook it. The meat is super tender, great beefy flavor, but this is like a pot roast or a stew. It's no longer, in my opinion, what I think of when I think of a steak. So when I think of a steak, I think of a medium rare, juicy steak and a different kind of mouthfeel or texture. This has been cooked for three and a half hours, so it too is tender, but it has a completely different texture and is delicious in its own right. It has a nice kind of unctuous mouthfeel to it because all the fat and sinew have cooked down. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think it could use even a little bit more salt. Let's give this broth a taste. Ooh, now that I tasted the broth, I take that back. I don't think this needs any more salt. If anything, I could take that broth and make it into a gravy to put over the beef and I think it would be perfectly salty with that. Mm -hmm. If I added any more salt to that, it would be too salty. I wanna try some of that tomato and onion in there as well. Mm -hmm. mm. So good and tender. This is absolutely delicious. I love the combination of thyme, onion, tomato, and garlic together. Very simple preparation and a great reminder that meat can indeed be canned and preserved. Just make sure you do it under pressure to ensure that the temperature is high enough that all pathogens are eliminated. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. I'm always looking for new suggestions, recipes, ideas. Let me know, I love hearing from you. And yeah, subscribe, like this video, and I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.
Pum 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 p